Welcome, Dr. Mandel here. I'm going to share some very important information with you today that can really hopefully help millions of people uh, worldwide. Uh, this is a particular article, a research article in PubMed. Uh, just to let you know what PubMed is, it's a uh, biomedical and life sciences journal. Uh, it's from the U.S. National Institute of Health National Library of Medicine. So this is the golden standard of research and the information I'm going to share is about that dietary magnesium and cardiovascular disease. Uh, we obviously know that a poor diet leads to cardiovascular disease as well as other factors, uh, stress, lack of sleep, there are genetics involved. Uh, but we have been taught that uh, saturated fat, trans fats, too much excessive sugars that lead to fatty liver as well as uh, too much inflammation, which is the key that which causes the LDLs to become elevated, which can cause placking within the arteries and lead to stroke and heart attack. But I am going to review some very important things about magnesium, uh, what you need to understand, because you're going to be wondering, why do I need magnesium? I'm taking it, but you may not be getting enough because you're also losing it uh, from stress, from other foods or uh, a poor diet that many of us have. Uh, from sugared processed foods that we're depleting our magnesium, plus the foods that we think we're getting our magnesium from, we don't know where those soils are grown, and those magnesium, le magnesium levels can be very low as well. So we really don't know. That's why it is good to supplement. If you are noticing a lot of tiredness, a lot of weakness, a lot of muscle cramping, spasming, trolley horses, or even high blood pressure, which is a tremendous common thing that many millions of people can really help their blood pressure by by supplementing magnesium. Now, if you're having like arrhythmias or, or regular heartbeats, it's very, very common, and it's quite common with osteoporosis. So those people who are uh, taking uh, vitamin D with calcium uh, to try to help their osteoporosis, if you are, are low in magnesium, magnesium is the essential mineral to allow vitamin D to become active in your system. So just because you're taking vitamin D, and if you don't have magnesium available, you're not going to assimilate your calcium into the bone, which is the reason why many people are having a hard time being helped with that condition. Now, there are many other symptoms, but I just want to go into some very important things uh, briefly about magnesium because it is tied into so many different problems. Just to let you know, your levels for men should be about 410 milligrams, 420 milligrams, give or take. Uh, a day and females about 320. I like to say everyone at least 400 and really even more uh, because of the fact that we lose so much. Uh, and common foods, by the way, let me just tell you that real quick. The best thing for magnesium, believe it or not, is pumpkin seeds, dried pumpkin seeds. But uh, your sesame seeds, your almonds, your seeds, your nuts, uh, your uh, yogurts, fresh eggs. Um, and then we go into fishes like your salmon, your shrimp, your anchovies. Uh, as well as many of the green vegetables, uh, your baked potatoes with skin, uh, your chicken has it, turkey, veal, uh, and your whole grains, many of the whole grains. So you can Google that. You can find the best foods that have magnesium, Make sure, making sure that you're getting it. So for those people, which are probably half the world, which are insulin resistant, uh, as well as type 2 diabetes and even regular diabetes, many of those studies all show that those people who are insulin resistant all have lower magnesium levels. Now, the next thing is hypertension. Uh, many millions and millions and maybe billions of people uh, just have hypertension to different degrees. And uh, high blood pressure obviously uh, can affect our, our eyes, our heart, our brain, our kidneys, as well as uh, the inside of the arteries, the endothelial lining, and if we're developing clots in there, or if we have chronic you know, clotting in, going on from the inflammation and calcium and uh, the bad cholesterol, this can eventually move. We call this an emboli. And if it gets to the heart before it gets in the, uh, to the heart area, in the coronary arteries, it causes, can cause a heart attack. If it gets to the brain, uh, it can cause a stroke or the lungs, a pulmonary embolism. So uh, if you increase magnesium, particularly if you are uh, having high blood pressure, uh, this dramatically may decrease your medicine you're taking or even get you off. Uh, so this is something you just may want to consider and run this by your doctor because of the fact that there are studies 
that shows so many positive, uh, great things uh, for that, as well as, by the way, let me just throw it in. If you're having problems sleeping, I didn't mention that, taking magnesium before you go to bed may uh, just make your whole life better. So hopefully take that for what it's worth. Now, your lipid profile, uh, your dyslipidemia, uh, which is a big problem, the increased fats, the high cholesterol, the high uh, low-density lipid protein, as well as triglycerides, all play a tremendous role with clotting uh, and clogging, may I say. So if you're having you know, high levels of cholesterol, bad cholesterol it is, because cholesterol still is important for the body and brain, but we're saying bad cholesterol, uh, increasing magnesium can do wonders for you because we're talking about preventing stroke, and stroke is uh, all directly related to these poor levels, these high inflammatory markers that's going on within your body. So let's take a quick look at this picture. This is impaired low levels of magnesium, inadequate levels. And if you look in the outside here, you can see uh, how this is all related to inflammation, oxidative stress, uh, platelet aggregation, where you get an accumulation of platelets, which can lead to clogging, endothelial dysfunction, which is in the inside of the artery, dyslipidemia, which is increased fat, insulin resistance, as well as hyperglycemia. So uh, magnesium has a direct play with the pancreas and how it secretes insulin, uh, which is a very important thing. Uh, also now, if you look below the cardiovascular diseases, stroke, heart failure, coronary heart disease, atrial fibrillation, cardiac arrest, as well as death, which we don't want to think about. One of the greatest things with magnesium is that because it's involved in so many different uh, combination of conditions in our body, as well as hormones and enzymes, uh, it plays a tremendous role in oxidative and inflammatory stress. Now, all inflammation is what leads to clogged arteries. There's no question. You have to have inflammation. Actually, any disease in the body is known to have inflammation. So uh, if we can continue to uh, eat the right diet, which I highly recommend, because remember, you have uh, antioxidants that we eat. All right. We have those antioxidants. Those antioxidants, the best ones uh, to me are your deep colored ones, uh, your, your fruits, your vegetables, the ones that are loaded with uh, beta carotene, vitamin C, your vitamin E. So those colorful purple, blue, red, orange, yellow hues that you see with uh, in those foods, those are really great antioxidants. Obviously, you have selenium and other other great foods as well. But if you're eating the whole foods uh, with the fiber, obviously, because that will help sustain normal glucose insulin levels so you don't get that spike, uh, it's really going to help your metabolism. Remember that when you have too much sugar, okay, that excess sugar, it's either you're going to burn it if you're active, it's going to be stored as glycogen uh, in the muscles or liver, or it's going to be converted to fat. Those lipids, those excess lipids is what leads to a lot of the cardiovascular problems. So I want you to be aware that, you know, just taking a supplement uh, is not the answer. You need to make sure you're exercising and, and doing all the right things, sleeping and uh, eating a well-balanced diet, very important, and hydrating, which is actually really important as well. So uh, just, I, I hope that this will really help you to give you an understanding the, the 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 importance of magnesium because there are millions and millions of people out there worldwide who have so many different problems that's lacking magnesium it's really really common so just look into it i really hope it will help you your family your loved ones i will post uh, this research article from pubmed in the description below if you'd like to look through it and uh, these are the facts and this is the way it is and i wanted to share it with you so uh, i want to wish you and your family many blessings uh, please share this with your friends and family. Leave your comments below because there will be many, I'm sure. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.